going to show you some simple repairs for the AP series pump. This would also pertain to the B series pump, which looks identical, just larger. Uh, we'll begin with check valves. To test the check valves, we need an inch and a quarter wrench. Break loose the jam nut, and it only has to go about half a turn. Then you can unthread the entire check valve from the head. <clears throat> you should be able to hear the balls rattle inside of the housing. If you do not hear it rattle, we need to flush out. Usually warm water works best. You can clean it out with air pressure blowing through the direction of the flow of the liquid and then blowing opposite direction to make sure the ball seats. If you are replacing with an RPM kit, routine preventative maintenance, that kit would include the O-ring and the spiral backup ring to be replaced. When you put the spiral backup ring on, make sure that the lock nut is in the section of the housing without any threads. Slip it in place. It will slide into a groove so it sets flush. Then slip your O-ring on. Both of these will fit in the section without threads. Then as you thread the check valve back into place, you will stop when the O-ring touches and snug down the jam nut to seal. The one on the suction would work the same way. Your two options there would be a 20 or 30 gallon an hour pump or any of the B series would have a check ball inside of the housing. 18 gallon or less would have a 5-8 stainless steel ball that sets on top of the housing. To change a diaphragm, a half inch wrench to take the head loose, but before you drain the oil, with a 3 8 box end wrench, we'll take out the oil drain plug. It will hold about one quart on the AP series pumps, uh, two quarts on the B series pump. A duplex pump would hold about two quarts on the AP series and three on the B series. The head will have contour plates on each side of your diaphragm. These contour plates have a curve. Both plates should curve away from each other in the middle. That allows your diaphragm to flex back and forth between the two plates. Make sure you have the contour plates in the correct way as you go back together. There is also a square ring, just an oil seal that fits in a groove on the pump side. This is only an option on the six bolt heads. Uh, most pumps are going to be six bolt head pattern. Older ones had eight bolts. As you replace your diaphragm, it is easiest to lay the pump on its side. Then you can line up your holes on the diaphragm, having them match where they should 
line up holding the second contour plate in the head and slide the head across the diaphragm As you're going back together with the head, make sure you do not tighten one bolt all the way in before you take the other side. This will cause an oil leak on the opposite side. You want them all to be just snug and then begin tightening This will bring the head down even against the pump housing all the way around. With your RPM kit you will also have a pressure relief valve underneath the yellow cap right beside your oil fill cap. The cap comes off. There is a 3 16 Allen head screw inside there. The amount of turns on this screw will determine where the pump bypasses oil at. They should be 14 turns will get the pump to work against between 100 and 110 pounds of pressure. I have a mark on my Allen wrench here as it comes around. right at 14 turns. Underneath that set screw is a spring. On the bottom side of that spring is a white plastic Teflon cone. This is your poppet. <clears throat> this will determine where the oil bypass is at. If you have a groove on that cone that you catch your fingernail on, it should be replaced. Your spring on the AP series should be about one and an eighth inch long. If it has been over tightened, your number of turns would have to be increased to be able to keep the pump working at the same pressures. So if you are less than an inch and an eighth, we recommend replacing the spring also. Just drop in place and make sure you count your full turns from the set screw sitting on top of the pump to get your pressures. Fourteen turns. We are now ready to refill with oil. Just an O-ring seal on the oil cap. As I said, this will hold one quart of oil. It does take it slowly. As you begin pouring, if you pour too fast, it will run over the sides. There is a very small opening inside the pump that allows the oil to go from this reservoir feeding back into the gears. The oil level is critical to the pump operation. If there is not enough oil in the pump, 
when it is running mm -hmm. just the motor running does not have to have liquid going through and you take the oil cap off if you hear a suction sound in there you need to add more oil once you've changed the diaphragm and refilled with oil to prime the pump it is usually best to turn the control knob back to 10 percent or even all the way down as far as it goes what this will do is allow the oil to bypass internally between the plunger and diaphragm and the oil housing <clears throat> as that is turned down to the low end we are eliminating any air pockets between the plunger and diaphragm that were created when we changed it if you let it run about a minute at the low setting usually that will suck all that oil back down in and fill the plunger you may have to add slightly more to the pump housing then you're ready to set the pump at your volume and begin pumping the tools needed for replacing the RPM kit would be an inch and a quarter line wrench for the check valves and jam nuts a 3 16 allen wrench for the pressure relief valve a half inch wrench ratchet or screw gun for the head bolts a 3 8 ratchet or socket will work on the oil drain plug those should be the only tools you would need other than a scribe hook to be able to pull the the spring out of the relief valve 